Uh, when you're, you know, you target different players and you have, you know, layers of the draft. And uh, if you're not, if you don't think a player is going to be there when it's your opportunity to pick, then you've got to be able to uh, try to maneuver yourself up to be able to get players that you like. What was it about the Czech goalie that you really were that excited about? Oh, he was uh, played exceptional in the summer tournament, the Lenka tournament, again in April. Like we thought he was one of the uh, reasons why the Czech team had such a good tournament. Um, very athletic goalie, very competitive, and uh, that's probably the qualities that made him most attractive to us. And uh, we didn't think he'd be there later, so you know, you need to, like I said, you target certain players and do everything you can to try to move up and take them. So we're really happy to get have the opportunity to take them. Did that run of goalies kind of compel you guys to move up over here and trying to move up to take them? No, with the goalies, we, we thought, you know, at the start of the uh, Second run, second round. That there would be a run on goalies, and so we had to be prepared to to be able to get one of the ones that we had targeted, and so it worked out really well for us. Did Kuchera see both of the checks a lot? Uh, Wojta Kuchera? Oh yes. yeah, yeah, saw him a lot, and then uh, like we had uh, our other scout in Europe, uh, Matt Sweeterstall, and in the summer tournament we had five scouts there. The April tournament we had six scouts there. We brought over uh, Daryl Baumgartner, who's uh, does a lot of work as far as evaluating uh, goaltenders for us, and uh, as a group, we had them rated very high. A lot of the guys in Hershey thought that Nathan was falling maybe the fourth or fifth round. How much of a priority was it so for you guys to keep him in house? And yeah, it's. I mean, he might have, but but I mean, once again, you take a chance that he's not going to be there. So you know, once once you've targeted a player, and you want to make sure you get him. You know, we would rather uh, do what we have to do in order to move up and make sure we get the player that we want rather than sit back and, and hope that that player is still there. Do you feel like you knew him? Did you feel like you knew him as well as anybody on the draft floor because he was able to attend your camp? Yes, for sure. And, you know, obviously we've been following Nathan for a few years because he was at our camp and we had identified him earlier as a potential player to be drafted. Uh, so, yeah, we thought we had uh, really good coverage on him. Can you appreciate his journey? First Australian ever to be drafted by the NHL. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And it's a little, when he comes up and says, hey, mate, how are you? It's a little bit different. We usually don't get that from the hockey players. We have some different languages, but uh, Australian usually, uh, you know, isn't uh, <laughs> what's being thrown at us. How appealing and rare is it to be able to take a guy and plug him right into your system who's actually had a, a year of pro experience under his belt and you've seen him play exhibition hockey at the NHL level? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, um, he's obviously uh, ahead of some of the other players that we drafted today because he has been playing with men, and, and like you said, we had him at our rookie camps, we had him play rookie games, we had him, you know, playing exhibition games, which he played very well in all of those, and then also playing in Hershey, so his, his development for us, you know, has obviously been speeded up because of this uh, being able to play with men. What can you tell us about uh, Shane Hersley? Oh, yeah, played uh, his high school hockey in Minnesota and then uh, went to play in the U.S. under-18 team. Uh, played center, was a, a bigger point producer when he was playing high school, but playing on the under-18 team, he was behind a few players like uh, Jack Eichel, who's a center, who you know I'm sure a lot of you have heard about him for uh, uh, coming draft. But uh, So Shane was a good skater, really good hands, but he was in more of a checking role with the under-18 team this year. But we know he's got the ability to score and make plays based on what we've seen before from him. He'll, he'll end up going playing in the USHL and then heading to uh, University of North Dakota, which will be really good for him there too. It's a very good program, so we're happy with that path that he's chosen. Expect him to have a bigger role, maybe be able to spread his wings a little bit at, at Omaha this year? Yeah, no, for sure. As I said, like he probably played a little bit further down in the lineup as compared if he had stayed and played. Uh, high school hockey, and, and now I think getting that opportunity to go play in the USHL, you know, we expect him to play even more of an offensive role there. You looked back at last night and taking uh, Jacob Ronda as the 13th overall pick. When you look at uh, when you when you scout him, where do you see his potential, and where do you, what kind of player do you project him to be if he if he reaches that potential? Oh, we're, we're looking at him for sure to be a top six forward. You know, Jacob's a uh, He's a very good skater, you know, he's uh, competitive, but he has a gift, he can score goals. And he, he's proven it everywhere he's played, um, especially in the bigger games, in the tournaments. Uh, 
another reason I thought why the Czech team played very well. But uh, yeah, I think he had eight goals in seven games, if I'm correct. But and they weren't just eight goals in seven games; they were important goals. They were game-winning goals and overtime goals and shootout goals. And he did the same in the summertime also. So he is. Uh, he can skate, you know, he's a smart player. Like I said, he's a hard worker, but he has a gift. The puck goes in the net. You guys have had some pretty good success recently with the U.S. developmental program. You got another tonight. What, what do you like about the way that they develop guys? Oh, well, you know what? It's, uh, first of all, we're just taking the best players available, available to us, no matter what program that they're in. But but the U.S. program is a very good program. Those, those young men have an opportunity to... Uh, play in pretty high level competitions as far as all the international tournaments. They have an opportunity to play in the USHL against older players and they have a really good opportunity to practice every day as compared to you know some situations they could have been in and they have the opportunity to do a lot of uh, off-ice training also so it's a very very good program and uh, they're very schooled both on and off the ice as far as coming out of there as far as workouts you know like as I said off the ice and, and obviously on the ice so good coaching good opportunity for growth for them so it's it's a very good program. Toronto selection also continues the trend of sorts of picking European skaters with your first picks in the draft is that something you're cognizant of or is that simply just a coincidence? No it's just coincidence you know for a while people said well you, you take a lot of players from Western Canada you know and it was like then after that, it was like, well, you take a lot of, you know, Swedish players, or it, it's just we just make our list and uh, and start picking players. I mean, we're we're just trying to find the best players available. And we don't care where they come from, Australia. <laughs> you know, we're just trying to take the take the best players that uh, that are available to us. How are things different this weekend with Brian kind of running the show at, at the draft table? No offense, but I'm. But you know, with him being the guy, was was it different? Did it have a different feel? Well, you know, I guess it. Yeah, obviously, a different feel. It's a different person. Um, but as you know, as far as the draft, I mean, we've even in the in the past, we've we have our meetings and we do our lists and we strategize, and then you come here and and uh, make your picks. I guess I'd maybe a little bit later when I reflect on it probably be uh, come up with a better answer for you as far as the differences to the draft but it's uh, you know had a lot of running through my mind here lately is just as far as the selection of players and moving up or moving back in the draft so there could be GMs that are very strong armed and there are some that can be very good listeners I mean does he give you that uh, that leeway to say okay you guys have seen these players oh yeah no it's uh, I mean it's all, all of this is always a collaborative effort you know and and uh, Brian asks everybody for their for their uh, input, you know, and, and together as a group we'll we come up with our list. Like I said, and we strategize and get ready to make our picks. So, but he's a he's a very good listener. Yeah. What type of role do you think Gersich will have at the college level and beyond? Oh, I I'm you know we're looking right now. I mean, that, uh, for sure we think he'd be a an excellent third line center. You know, you're always hoping that they can always even move up higher in the lineup, but uh, he's a very good two-way player and very intelligent. You know, we like to see him get, uh, like I said, the skill level we were talking about before that he showed a year ago. We'd like to see him be able to build on that again after playing more of a checking role for the under-18 team. What about your last two kids, uh, the other high school kid you selected and then uh, this young kid? Oh, yes, uh, Stephen Spinner uh, played at uh, Eden Prairie, uh, right winger. Uh, really uh, uh, determined young young man. He's uh, one of those guys that's really battles in the corners and takes the puck hard to the net. Um, he's going to play in the USHL also next year and then go to the University of uh, Nebraska Omaha. So again, good situation for him. Another good program for him to be in. Um, so you know we're we're happy to be able to get him, get him at that area. He's a very honest player. You know, very very good effort all the time. In the last pick, your seventh round pick, was it a young Swedish player? Yes, it was Kevin Egelstall, who uh, kind of in the same situation as Gersich a bit. He, he played on all the uh, Swedish under-18 teams for the national team. Also played as junior and uh, during the season in Frölunda, and was more in a checking role on the national teams. But he did put up good points when he played for Frölunda in the junior league. But same kind of player, spinner too. You know, skates well really works hard, kind of likes to get into the four check and uh, and be physical and, and take pucks hard to the net. So pretty similar styles actually, the 
the last two uh, picks that we had. When you came in, I think you and three other teams had the most possible selections of nine. How valuable is it to have those extra fourths, extra sevens, things like that for what you want to do? Yeah, no, it's it's really valuable, but it, it enables Brian, you know, as a general manager, to be able to make the moves that he would uh, would like to make. You know, it's pretty hard if you don't have picks or the extra picks, and you're scrambling around trying to find more. And you know, if you know that going in, then you can, as part of your strategy, you've you know you've got those extra picks that could could become valuable as the draft goes on. And in our case, it was they were very valuable for us. Those late round picks can uh, kind of separate organizations. Kind of back. I mean, if you can get a find in the fifth, sixth round, they they can really separate a team that drafts well in the later round. Yeah, no, for sure. It's um, you know when you get into free agency sometimes and you have 15 teams chasing you know the same sort of players or 20 teams and whether it's free agency out of college and that it's uh, if you can get your later round picks to play, I think you're ahead of the game for sure without a doubt. Lately, with guys like Holfe and Carrick and Barber and uh, Patrick Way from fourth on down, has there been something that you guys have done differently in concentrating on that fourth and below in the last five, six years? Or something? No, not really. No, we've we've you know kept the same uh, strategy that we've you know we've had right from uh, from the beginning. You know, always trying to find the best player available. You know, in some years, I guess if it's been fairly even, we think there is a need for. A, an upgrade in a, a certain position, we'll do that. You know, we've had some years we've taken some goaltenders, or you know, it's. But no, no, we're, we're uh, it's just worked out well for us. Any yeah. of the guys that you took uh, yesterday or today really knock your socks off in the interview process, or do you, is that pretty much standard? Do you? Yeah, actually, I'm amazed at. Uh, these young men, how well they interview. I know what I would have been like if I was being interviewed. <laughs> I would have been a lot, a lot more nervous and probably a lot less uh, mature in the, in the way that they handle themselves and carry themselves. So, uh, no, it's the interview process is very important for us. You know, we're uh, we, we've watched them skate and stick handle, pass and shoot, and, and those attributes. But uh, it's really important for us to find good people. You know, it's a big investment that we're making. So, and you, you know, you look at teams that win. We usually have a locker room that's full of real good character people, so it's it's really important. We try to do much, as much uh, work as we can, and uh, and these gentlemen were all, obviously all past the interview process for us with flying colors. Yeah.